Hello, my name is Roman Jinji Hashvili, and this is the video about easy way to play certain openings, and this particular DVD is going to be about Sicilian C3. Now, let's talk about Sicilian C3 and you know, why am I presenting this to you. Is this kind of the best way to play against Sicilian? Not of course. The best way if you want to play, you have to play modern variations. You have to dedicate in incredible amount of time and that's what uh, professionals do. If, but you are not professional. So this is the easy way to play Sicilian defense. That's not what I mostly play, uh, but what I normally play in C Sicilian, I would recommend is Grand Prix. But this is the easy way to play against Sicilian, something you can learn really quick and have a very reasonable position with a clear plan. And this is not the Sicilian C3 that been, books been published and brochures uh, in, in a long analysis, no. This is Sicilian C3, a Latin variation which is easy to learn. So that means you can learn quick and easy if you want to have very credible uh, position, very credible variation against the Sicilian. So, the way it works E4, C5, and now C3. Well, here black mainly has um, three continuations three main continuations. One is knight f6, one is d5, and also there is d6. Of course, there have been other moves played, such as b6, for example, that gives immediately white good pawn center for no compensation. This is even moves like Queen A5, uh, I have seen played in tournaments. The idea is to, after D4 CD, to prevent taking on D4 with a pawn because of pin. But I don't know of any opening ever where second move with a queen would be a good move, especially when you play black. You are already kind of tempo down, and you make second move with the queen. This cannot be uh, really tolerated, and this cannot be good. So let's start with one of the main continuations, knight f6, and I have to point it to you that we are not analyzing the theory we mentioning the theory and analyzing the typical games that have been played with this variation. First game, I'll take game played between uh, two masters in uh, 2010, so not too long ago. E5, of course the main move, knight D5. If well, everything that you see white is played, I would recommend, and if I don't, I would mention it. If white has done something I don't like in the opening, I would definitely mention it. D4, CD, and here main move is CD, and there is also move knight f3, which doesn't change much because black cannot take on c3 because of queen takes d5. 
after knight f3, knight c6, there is a bishop c4 move. Now, bishop c4 is one move I would recommend to play, and the other move is cd. We will go through this again, cd d6 to this position. Okay, bishop c4. In this game, knight b6 was played, bishop b3, d6, well, black could win a pawn here, but after knight takes c3, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to play this position for black. They are way behind in development, and it's it's not easy to finish development in this uh, position. And if you don't want to sacrifice this pawn, we're gonna go through another option in the next couple of games. So in this position, after d6, ed, this is theoretical continu continuation, and this is a theory, and here e6, the point of e6 to recapture on d6 with a bishop. e6, this is all theory, c takes d, bishop takes d6, knight c3, and here black played a6. I don't like this move, normally I don't like too many pawn moves in the opening, I think black should have castled white castled but that's why black played it because now they go knight e7 and they want to make sure they have a grip on d5 uh, pawn after knight e7 bishop g5 this is a very interesting option h6 bishop takes e7 bishop takes e7 well, this position, well, it looks like very good position. Black has two bishops, and white has isolated pawn on d4. In reality, this is quite bad position for black. Very bad position for black. White has two very powerful options and let's go on with them. d5 move was played and it's a very good move but white might have had even better option knight e5. Now why knight e5? Why can we consider knight e5 as a very strong move? Well now knight goes in the center of the board but there is a concrete reason. Castling and queen d3. You see pawn on h6 is liability for black. That makes knight on e5 strong because f6 will always be met with knight g6. But in this particular case it may be met with bishop c2 also. So this is out of question f6 and after queen d3 White has a very powerful threat, bishop c2. So black should go knight d7, and after bishop c2, black should go knight f6. Well, this is already a very dangerous position. Black still has to solve the problem of c8 bishop, and if we go now knight g4, attacking the knight defender of h7 square uh, forcing black to go g6 and now come back with the knight on e5 black i think is in really really big danger here there is a possibility of knight takes g6 rooks will come quickly on a central files and black's king is very very insecure. These g6 and h6 pawns are
clear target. So I would say this was the best option for white 95. Now let's see not as powerful options that still give, gave white an advantage. D5, knight takes d5, knight takes d5, pawn takes d5, bishop takes, and after castling, queen b3. Black has two bishops, but white's position is much, much better here. White will quickly bring the rooks on d and e file. They have powerful bishop on d5, weakness on b7, and black is underdeveloped. So this position is much better for white. Bishop f6, rook a d1, threatening bishop f7, queen a5, and here white should have played rook e1. But white played h3, unnecessary prophylactic move. And now black could have equalized. Black could have played queen b5. And you see if we exchange queens, b2 is a target. And if you go b3, then a2 can fall. So that's not such a a good position for white, but if they don't do that, then black will equalize. If we go rook d2, then we have no advantage at all. So the only option here would be to go rook d2, and just to um, uh, admit that we missed an advantage. So rook e1 was the best move, and now on queen b5, we just exchange and go 95. It's still good size advantage for white. But of course, it's not nearly as good as it would have been if white played 95 followed by queen d3. So nevertheless, let's go with the game. d5, knight takes, knight takes. Pawn takes, bishop takes. Castle, queen b3. Bishop f6, rook a d1. And after queen a5, um, h3. And after h3, white has, white still has some advantage but it's very, very difficult to win. Well, they are better. Rook b8, rook fe1, queen c7, black makes aimless moves, and white gains very strong initiative. Queen d8, knight e5. Now f7 square is a real target. Bishop takes, rook takes, queen f6, rook e3. Now this position already really bad. We each have a light square bishop. White bishop is much stronger. Rooks, activity of the rooks you can't even compare. White can go with the rook to c7. White can double rooks on e file, and all this makes black's position very, very difficult. After bishop f5, now rook c7, you see the clear target on f7. b5, rook f3, queen g6, rook takes f7. This move supposed to end the game immediately, but it didn't. Rook takes f7, and white played bishop takes f7, going to rook end game where they have an extra pawn 
which is very difficult to win, but they won some uh, 40 moves later. But the reason why this game, this move, supposed to end the game is because here after g4 black is completely busted because I don't know there is no move that might be a rook e8 and rook takes f5 and after rook e7 you see we know that if white exchanges everything on f7 and goes to pawn ending this is very easily won actually you can win this game blindfolded when you have an extra pawn and you go to end game you know almost over 90 percent pawn endings are won if you have an extra pawn but it's not the same with any other end game. Always, well, of course, extra pawn is going to give you an advantage, but will never give you such a sure win as the pawn ending will. And this could have been, would have been, and should have been the end of the game. Well, that's not what happened. What happened in a game is that white. Uh, instead of playing g4 went to the rook ending as i already mentioned they won 40 moves later actually game should have ended in a draw it was like a clear draw towards the end of the game and black made some terrible mistakes and lost this we we had there is no need for us to go through with the remaining of this game. The point was, and our target was the opening, and we have done good analysis of it. Now, let's go to another game, E4, C5. This game was played between two very strong players. So it's like 2,500 and 2,400 players. C3, knight f6. Actually, very interestingly played game, knight d5. d4, cd, knight f3. And black chose different option, e6. Well, no matter what black plays, your plan remains the same. You want to get space advantage, quick development, with potential of organizing attack on a king side. Remember, this is like absolute requirement. That's how you should be playing uh, this opening and not get derailed with some, some weird ideas that you may think that you have a chance to play on a, uh, on a queen side and some uh, weird premature attacks like h4, g4 before you conclude development it should be it should be very straightforward develop quickly and then look for attack ok, after cd b6 knight c3 knight takes c3 bc, bishop b7 bishop d3 Bishop e7, the, both sides castled. Well, in this position, I would continue with Bishop f4, Rook e1, but the player with white decided to play differently, and which is not such a bad idea. They played knight d2. It's a lot more aggressive plan. Uh, white wants to go f4, support the e5 square, then go knight e4, and develop the queen. So white goes for direct kingside attack. It's not a bad idea at all. So d6, f4. Black decides to bring knight to a6 and c7. Um, 
it's very difficult to put hands on some to point to some move that caused disaster, actually should have caused disaster uh, for um, black. It didn't. White just won the game. But you see how it could have uh, been over much earlier than it was. So after knight e4, knight c7, queen h5, g6, queen h6, already black is in a lot of trouble. Black cannot allow knight g5, so bishop takes e4, bishop takes e4, and d5. Well, this is a very natural move, d5, and uh, if white plays knight d3, maybe black wants to go f5. And if white takes some passant, bishop takes. White is better, but black is far from over. So, but the reason why it should have been disaster because white played f5, and this is very, very bad for uh, black. Of course, taking is out of question, taking the bishop. So black is forced to take on a five with the e pawn. Taking with g pawn probably will end the game even quicker. And a pawn takes a five. Here white played bishop f5 which made a game a lot longer it's supposed to be. Instant win in this position. Of course, it's easy for me to say because I have good companion, Ripka, that here, after rook f3, black is totally busted. And I'm not surprised. Actually, what I learned of uh, thinking the way, the, the logical thinking should say, that when we have one bishop aiming on king's side, second bishop, queen on h6, and a rook potentially can go to h5, and black has almost all their pieces on back rank, there should be tactical solution. And this once more uh, proves this theory. So rook f3 should have been played, and there is no defense to rook h3. Actually, variation is quite interesting here. f6 must be played. It's the only move to try to play rook f7. But then after f6, now bishop f5. Of course, taking is out of question because of rook g3. Uh, and after bishop takes f5, rook f7, bishop takes g6. Pawn takes g6, and now rook h3. And you will see how quickly it would have ended after rook h3, rook g7, and here, incredibly powerful blow. Actually, it's a good tactic lesson, good, good tactical lesson and combinations. And this is, it comes all natural to Ripka, but for human, it's extremely instructive. Bishop g5, and obviously you cannot take the bishop, because then rook f1. With, with inevitable mate on h8. Uh, and after bishop g5, the only thing black can do is to go f5. Now black is attacking white's bishop. And again, e6. That's a powerful move, controlling f7 square. And of course, taking the bishop will lead to immediate mate. And after e6, Knight takes e6, 
And then you see what white did with e6 move here. It forced knight to take on e6, but knight on c7 was protecting the rook on a8. Now rook is not protected any longer, and bishop takes e7. Rook takes e7 will lead to quick disaster. And if queen takes e7, now you see knight left c7 square. Now white is easily winning. They have big material advantage and an attack. That was a forced variation that was missed, and you cannot uh, blame white for missing uh, this. Well, it's, it's not easy to see. I just want to tell you that how powerful the position. This rook f3 variation proves the power of peace aim on a king's side. But bishop takes f5 was played, and uh, taking on f5, of course, will lead to quick disaster. Rook g3 is threatening, and then rook h3. So this cannot be played. After bishop takes f5, knight e6. Now the bishop may be hanging, so bishop g4, bishop g5, queen h3, bishop takes c1, rook takes c1. White still has very, very large advantage. Uh, and after rook takes c1, knight g5, queen e3, and after queen e7, white played bishop d1. I don't like this move. c4 is a lot stronger to get the pawns moving, d5, d6, or maybe even not d5, maybe simply taking. White has big positional advantage, but it's not crushing the way it could have happened. White went on winning the game, but we are already beyond the, uh, uh, our interest in the opening. And you saw how the magnitude of this attack, of uh, uh, White's attack, when they have so many pieces concentrated on the king side. So I think it's very instructive game, even though White didn't play it the best they could. Now, I want to mention to you that sometimes when you play incorrectly this knight f6 variation against a Lapin, you likely, well, black in that case, likely to get crushed. And interestingly enough, I'm going to bring you now two games where black got crushed. One of them, game was played, I'm even scared to mention it, it, more than half a century ago. Game was played by me, that shows, that tells you something about my age. Game was played by me in 1957. and. It were, it's very well known in the chess world game, and it was mentioned by some grandmasters as uh, one, it's the most original combination that was ever played in chess. I'll show you, i run through this game really quickly. It may not be very typical, uh, but some people find it maybe quite interesting. Bishop f5, castling e6. Bishop d2. It's of course an accurate move, but I was very young then and didn't know, didn't appreciate value of a tempo as much as I do now. Knight b4, knight c3, knight d3, bishop g5, and knight takes b2. This move almost shocked me. And after knight takes b2, and I see there are so many continuations and all pieces are hanging for white and black. 
and I thought I'm winning easily and very quickly. Boy, I was wrong. Knight takes d8, bishop b5, check. Knight c6 and knight d4. Here, my opponent played bishop d3. And sure enough, you can say that white has multiple ways to win the game. And that's what I thought. Knight takes c6. And another shock from my opponent. Bishop takes rook. Now, any discovered check with this knight will result to bishop takes bishop on b5. On the other hand, if we just simply take the bishop, white, black cannot recapture because they will get checkmated. So, after a6, white is in trouble. Bishop has to move and they simply capture the knight. Well, and here comes the the um, combination that made it like a most original combination ever. This bishop on b5, bishop on g5, and knight on c3, perfectly developed, and next three moves made uh, history in chess world, uh, history in tactical uh, combinations. So bishop takes f1. Peace goes to its original position when black takes. The other piece goes to its original position. Knight is trapped. Rook b8 will be met by rook b1. And after black played bishop a3, the third piece goes to its original position, winning a piece and the game. So this was quite interesting. And this game was played in 1957. So now let me show you another crash in the same variation. But that was played a little bit later, like a few months ago. E4, C5. This was played against two quite good masters, which with a 100% transposition. Knight C6, C3, Knight F6. You see, we transpose to the same variation. Knight D5, D4, CD, CD, D6. Earlier on this DVD, I said you don't have to go bishop c4. You also have an option to play knight c3. And that's what was played in this game. Um, black has several different ways to play. Uh, de is the main move. And knight takes c3 played. b takes c. And here, here, Black uh, played not such a good move, which is DE. Now, E6 is okay, and still I think white has some advantage. But after DE, white has a lot bigger advantage. DE, e, D5, Knight B8 was played. Well, what else black to do? If e4, knight g5 is very strong, and on knight e5, queen d4. This is all part of a theory. You can find it in any book that has analyzed a Lapin variation of Sicilian. Uh, black chose knight b8. It seems okay. After knight b8, Knight takes e5. Black is slightly, well, black is not, maybe not slightly. Black is behind in development. And they are hoping to go maybe g6 or knight d7, g6, bishop g7, and castle. But it didn't meant to be. So after knight d7, you see how quickly position deteriorated for black. 
queen c7, queen d4, protecting the knight, you see the black knight is pinned, and all of a sudden it's very difficult to find the move. Queen d4 is particularly, you see this is multifunction move, protecting the pawn, protecting the knight, and not allowing to go g6 because rook will be hanging. So black played f6 and after knight c4 position is completely lost for black. Bishop f4 is coming and their piece placement and all the back rank pieces they look very awful. King f7, bishop f4, queen d8, castling, knight b6, knight takes b6, queen takes b6, and position is totally lost for black, and here white made real bad move which still gave them winning advantage. They played simply queen takes b6 and won easily the end game, but this is actually a good lesson for you. This is type of position. How do you think in this position? How do you find the best move? The only way, there is no concrete combination sacrifice. The only way you find the best move in those type of positions is if you think logically. Let's see. White's pieces are perfectly developed. Rooks are ready to come into the game any second. And king is in a lot of trouble on f7. What do you do? Do you exchange queens in this case? Open blacks rook and let them finish development just to get one weakness on b6 or do you go for kill after queen a4 game is absolutely over now i don't think anyone can survive like five six moves in this position rook e1 is coming by the way bishop e8 check is threatening not to mention bishop c4 and d6 or in or maybe d6 and e, bishop e4 and the rooks coming to central files this queen takes b6 is very big practical mistakes but even then white had even by after making this bad move they played bishop c7 rook a3 c4 eventually they won pawn on b6 and they won the game uh, we lost interest to see the rest of the games because it has nothing to do with our topic now next game i want to show you is extremely interesting played between 2400 player with white and Gada Kamsky, who is 2700 player. White lost this game and I find it very, very interesting. Why did white lose the game? And this is going to be very instructive, maybe one of the most instructive games. E4, C5, C3, Knight, F6, Gadakamsky is black and he won the game because he is so much higher rated but you see how bad of a position he had d4 cd knight f3 knight c6 cd d6 bishop c4 knight b6 bishop b5 and bishop d7. Here white castled. 
and the loud knight takes e5. Castling is a very interesting idea, and I like it. The more I analyze this game, the more I like castling. Knight takes e5, and white plays knight takes e5. Now black had a chance to end up with extra pawn, to be with extra pawn. Uh, if they take on b5, that, that's what happened in the game, knight takes f7, king takes f7, and queen h5 check, and taking back on b5. Of course, neither one of these players missed that. That's what happened in the game. But what would have happened if black had decided to win a pawn? Bishop takes d7 and knight takes d7. Well, before we talk about knight takes d7, I want to go over a little bit with queen takes d7. Pawn takes, queen takes, rook takes, and e6. Well, this position is a little bit better for white. After knight c3 and bishop e3, or maybe knight b5, they have more space. Black still has to finish development. But let's look at knight takes d7. This position I like very much for white. Knight c3. Now, taking on d4 is very dangerous because it's very difficult to sh for black to finish development comfortably. They cannot go g6. If they go e6, they will not be able to develop bishop because of g7 pawn. So, and if they, after knight c3, they try to go e6, then d5, and again they are in trouble. They, well, they may not be in trouble, but they have problems. If ed, knight takes d5, and rook e1, for example, if bishop e7, there may be, I don't know, queen g4, castle, and rook d1. So e6 is probably the better option. But even then, d5 is very strong. And after ed, knight takes d5. And black still is going to have problems finishing development. Queen g4, and if castling, one option is rook d1, but also maybe even better bishop h6, and after bishop f6, then rook a d1. It's a lot of problems for black. White is threatening queen takes d7, followed by knight f6. Also, they're threatening knight takes f6 right away, or actually, in fact, they could have done knight f6 right away, but then black has some defending chances. White can take on d7 and b7. Rook d1 is a lot better move, and I think black is simply busted. So that's why Kamsky loves to win pawns. If he liked this continuation, d takes c, he would have played it, but he didn't like it. And I don't blame him. So bishop takes b5 was played. Knight takes f7. King takes f7. Queen h5 check. g6. Queen takes b5. Queen d7. Queen b3 check. And d5. This is the key position for the variation. And this is the where white made critical mistake. White made a mistake that decided the curse of the game. White played most obvious move, knight c3. And this is a bad move. What happened after knight c3? And I will go over 
with you what should have happened. Bishop g7, attacking pawn, bishop e3, e6, rook a e1, rook a c8, and I think it's already advantage for black. Queen c2, queen a3, a6, b3, rook c6, black has initiative and they went on winning the game. We don't see, we don't have to see the rest of the game. Black has much better position here. But let's get to the critical point of this game. Knight c3 is a mistake. Before I show you why it's a mistake, let me tell you what should have been done. Should have been done knight d2. And here is why. When knight goes on c3, you know that black is eventually going to play e6. Knight on c3 blocks the queen, white's queen. Knight on c3 does not have any good squares to go to, doesn't have any future. Meanwhile, knight d2 will go to most logically best square on f3, aiming to e5 and g5, the vital squares in the position. And there is not much black can do on bishop g7, knight f3. You see, now white may play bishop f4, and they have good grip on e5 square. And instead of putting bishop on e3 the way they did, passively, to protect the d4 pawn, now this bishop has a lot better future. For example, on rook f8, white can go bishop h6. Exchanging dark square bishops, which is very good for white, then they have a very powerful square on e5. Of course, taking is out of question because black loses a queen. And after bishop h6, this is absolutely awful position for black, if not lost. So this is terrible position. So the result of the opening is this position. And after knight c3, white is worse. And after knight d2, they have big advantage. When you develop the knight, the farther closer to the center you develop, it's not always the best because knight doesn't go, knights, the kind of pieces are, they don't go to hold center, like a control center. Knight needs one very good outpost in a center. And that outpost is on e5. By playing knight c3, knight aiming to no outpost, has no future, blocks its own pieces, and makes d4 pawn significant weakness. And in the case of knight d2, d4 pawn will be key pawn for guaranteeing uh, white the square on e5 and controlling hold center. That's how huge difference one move can make in chess. And I've seen examples like this over and over again. So it's very, very instructive game. The next game I want to show you is actually already from different variation. So we, I want to round the finish with knight f6 variation. And I want to start with various positions on d5. Okay, e4, c5, c3, d5. 
Well, of course, we will take here, and after queen takes, maybe knight d4 first, and here blacks move, and black can play various different ways. One of the ways that is not recommended for black to play is c takes d early, because now they have their queen exposed to early attack. Well, for example, knight f3, and that's the way this game went. Black played bishop g4, knight c3. Actually, this is all opening theory. Bishop takes f3, g takes f, queen takes d4. Queen takes d4, knight takes d4, and knight b5. This position is known in theory as very, very bad for black. And this game didn't change this evaluation. Uh, the move was played castle. Knight c2 check is not good also because after knight takes a1, knight c7 check, king d7, knight takes a8, it's very difficult to trap the knight on a8 when after bishop e3, white attacks the a7 pawn to free the knight, and knight on a1 is completely doomed. So this is bad way to play, and black castled in this position, knight takes d4, rook takes d4, black has an extra pawn but completely lost position. Rook d6, now bishop takes a7, it's very important pawn to get our pawn back and also to keep black's king from hiding on b8. So after bishop takes a7, knight f6, bishop b5, g6, Rook c1, king d8, bishop b8, and after rook d5, a4, white has two bishop, two bishops, very strong attack with possible bishop c7 check, and black is completely busted. There is absolutely no need to go any farther than that. Now, this game that we will look now, <laughs> interestingly enough, is case of misplaying, making maybe invisible mistake for black and getting crushed immediately. Well, they should have gotten crushed, but they didn't because white missed uh, white saw that how they can get big advantage. They did get big advantage and they didn't look for more when they could have completely crushed black in the opening. Played against two very strong masters, e4, c5. Sometimes it's amazing how strong masters can make obvious mistake in the opening. d4, Knight f6, knight f3, bishop g4. Now, bishop g4 is controversial line. Uh, black plays e6 normally, so before they go e6, they want to develop the bishop on g4. It's absolutely logical move, but in the... but it loses tempo and allows, gives white some extra opportunities. Bishop e2 was played. Well, this is one move, and another very strong move is knight d2, which we're going to analyze and look at the game with it as well. So, bishop e2 was played in this game. Knight c6, h3, bishop h5. Knight c6 is all already a uh, mistake. 
black should have played e6. Well, the reason why you will see knight c6 h3, and after bishop h5, c4, attacking the queen, queen d6, d5, knight e5, and knight c3. Now, black is well unde uh, underdeveloped. So after knight c3, they went a6 because they were afraid of knight b5 probably or maybe queen a4. So they went a6, it's another waste of time. They, wa they are wasting very valuable time in the very early stage of the game. And here, after knight takes e5, black is totally lost. There is no defense. The only move, queen takes e5. And here, g4 was played by white. And after bishop g6, they went f4. And on queen c7, they went f5. which still won a piece. But what would have been, it won a piece, black had little compensation, very little compensation. After castle, queen d3, e6, and now f takes g, e takes d. Well, of course, the compensation is not sufficient. White has an extra piece and won the game. Meanwhile, White could have totally destroyed black here by playing instead of g4 if they played f4. Because after f4, what to do? Now, if queen moves away, then we simply take the bishop. If bishop takes on e2, then it's complete disaster after queen a4 check. You see now queen is thinking. And on b5, knight takes b5. Now it's hard, very hard to tell what is not threatening. There is a discover check, devastating discover check. Queen is hanging. And queen doesn't have any good square to go. And bishop will be hanging. Um, According to Ripka, this black should resign here. Well, actually, according to anyone who knows anything about chess, black should resign. Well, that didn't happen, but that could have happened. So, black, you have to blame black for not playing e6. You got to go e6 to stop c4 followed by d5. So that's why black lost this game quickly. So now let's go to next game. Now this next game, we're going to see the more improved version of the same variation. Improved for white. C3, D5, ED, queen takes D5, D4, knight F6, knight f3, bishop g4. I am covering bishop g4 variation first because against all other options for black I have a simple suggestions to you. Uh, a suggestion to you. So knight bd2. This is very interesting move. White is preparing to take on f3 back with the knight and also preparing to go bishop c4. This is probably the most accurate move in this position. What happened? Now, if cd, that didn't happen in a game. Then white will get good size advantage by playing bishop c4, queen d7, knight e5. Actually, it's very pure advantage and simple. Bishop takes f7, knight takes d7, 
then king takes d1 and after dc bc white simply has two very powerful bishops and also open b and e files and position itself is very open perfect position for bishops that is much better position for white so in the game uh, that didn't happen black played e6 then queen a4 check you see how quickly white got good size advantage knight c6 bishop c4 queen d6 now bishop b5 intending knight e5 bishop takes f3 knight takes f3 bishop e7 d takes c queen takes c5 bishop e3 queen d6 rook d1 queen c7 and knight d4 now what more would you want to have for white white is here most probably winning a pawn they have two very strong bishops better development and and defile i mean you don't get half of it in any opening if black plays correctly and here black seemingly didn't make any big mistakes and they have absolutely terrible position we don't have to see whole game after that uh, we'll just go a few more moves uh, what happened after knight d4 castle bishop takes c6 pawn takes c6 queen takes c6 and after queen a5 actually queen b7 is a very strong move idea is to go knight c6 well and also attacking the you see the uh, bishop on e7 now here is black totally hopeless white has extra pawn on top of all our other advantages so white won real quickly in a few moves that's this game is history and now i want to show you positions without bishop g4 in this same variation so here black does not play bishop g4 so what they what they play is e6 and after e6 i recommend move knight a3 not because it's the best move it may not be the best move but one thing is for sure this is the move that gives you very comfortable position very easily and you have clear plan actually you have an advantage some advantage as well after knight a3 let's see the first game after knight a3 bishop e7 bishop e2 castling what's the idea of knight uh, a3 move eventually you're going to b5 and stopping knight b5 wouldn't be a good idea either because then white goes knight c4 gaining tempo because of the knight b6 threat and if it's necessary knight will go to e5 well also if you take on d4 with black white is not going to recapture on d4 with a pawn they're going to recapture on d4 with a knight and not this knight but the other knight threatening knight c7 check and 
black queen probably has to go back and knight takes d4 gives white very clear very easy position to play without any effort practically I would like to get position like this in uh, any opening so now what black did is castle white went knight b5 and now black stopped with knight a6 but knight a6 is not such a good position for knight first of all knight doesn't have any future on a6 and secondly it makes knight on b5 uh, very comfortable feel because there is no a6 anymore so after knight a6 castling now queen d8 bishop f4 knight d5 bishop g3 and after cd queen takes d4 now this position is already real bad for black after queen b6 c4 queen takes d4 knight takes f3 takes d4 and after knight f6 bishop f3 and there is no need to analyze and to evaluate this position pawn on b7 is terrible weakness bishop cannot be developed knight on a6 does not cannot move because of knight c7 with potential discovery so black has too many problems for no compensation normally when you have such a so many problems on one side you should have something on the other side they have nothing on any side so position is very bad and lost and how that's how black did they lost real real quickly here is another game also with the same e6 variation e4 c5 we are still on second move d5 variation ed queen takes d5 d4 e6 knight f3 knight f6 knight a3 knight c6 and white goes bishop e3 they will play knight b5 after white takes on d4 uh, they played bishop e3 knight g4 this is also very interesting bishop c4 knight takes e3 fe queen d8 how do we evaluate this position white lost two bishops but they're going to have f file and potentially chance of organizing a king side attack let's see what happened in the game this is also you don't have to play like this but this is another option new plan new position and they are all favor white white castle bishop e7 e4 cd cd now white has very strong center taking this knight will damage white's pawn structure but comparing to the activity they can start with potential d5 this is meaningless so after cd cd black castle and king h1 very prophylactic move stopping from possible uh, knight takes d4 and bishop c5 pinning uh, against the h1 uh, g1 king king h1 a6 knight c2 b5 bishop d3 f5 now queen e2 position after f takes e is extremely dangerous for black because of 
knight is hanging, pawn is hanging on h7. Actually, it's not even playable. Um, after queen e2, bishop f6, and now white made very strong move, a4. But what this has to do with attacking on a king side? a4 is to remove the b5 pawn and put the bishop on c4 to intensify pressure in the center. a4, b4, and bishop c4. King h8, rook fd1, and on queen c7, e5, and on knight a5, knight a5 was played here, which, uh, which is already a bad position. If bishop e7, we could go d5, and we can also go rook c1. In both cases, position is extremely difficult for uh, black. Black tried here knight a5, and after e takes f, knight takes c4, f takes g7, king takes g7, rook a c1, knight b6, a5, knight d7, and knight g5. Now let's evaluate this position. It's not much to evaluate here. Black is totally busted, e6 is hanging, queen h5 is p coming, and knight takes b4 or knight e3 is coming. Black, all black has is bunch of undeveloped pieces and weak king. That's a bad combination of things to have after the opening. White won real quickly. Game is completely over here. A number of years ago, against the C3 variation, was popular system D6 was freshly discovered by a group of uh, uh, very strong players. The idea of the um, d6 variation is, of course, not to give uh, white such a comfortable center, but to challenge it right away. Knight f6. I am one of the players who used to play this variation for black against c3. Well, and here is my recommendation if you come across this variation, what to do. What you're supposed to do here is to play very simple move. Bishop d3. White can win a pawn here by playing d takes c. The reason why I say it's win a, to win a pawn because Black will never recapture on c5 because they don't want to have this position. And they cannot capture on e4 because there's queen a4 check winning the knight on e4. That's why I said winning a pawn. But that's the idea of this variation for black. Now they would go knight c6. And again, I will go quickly through some of the variations with this, but it's not really necessary, but it for information purposes, I will tell you what is gonna happen here, because what is the essence of this sacrifice? Knight c6, and now black wants to take the pawn on e4, and if white plays cd, then knight takes e4. And D takes E was played before. Queen takes, king takes, knight f2, king e1, pawn, uh, knight takes h1, pawn takes, rook takes. Now, I have played this position for black. I've had it. This is not good for white. Black has an advantage. Even if white captures the knight on h1, 
it's not good. And as I mentioned, something you are not going to have, you don't have to know. Okay, so this is the why black sacrifice is that hoping white to take on d6 and then they take on e4. And if white doesn't play d takes e, then black will recapture on d6 with the knight. And if white goes f3, protecting the e4 pawn, hoping still for favorable endgame, then black goes d5, it becomes rather complicated. I will tell you this, these complications are the favor white, but not as much as the variation that I am going to suggest for white for you to play. And also, it's a lot more complicated than I want to suggest you to play. So, why should we play more complicated line with less advantage than we can play less complicated line with more advantage. So the move I want to recommend you strongly is bishop d3. And black can play c takes d or they black can play g6. Well, there are few important uh, pointers. C takes d, c takes d. G6. You have to know something very important here. You cannot let black to put pressure on your d4 pawn. For example, do not play knight f3 where white can play bishop g4 and eliminate the protector of pawn on d4 and then put pressure after bishop g7 and knight c6 on your d4 pawn. Well, there are two ways to play. You can go knight e2 to stop bishop g4, because then we go f3. Or, in the game that I'm going to show you now, white played h3. White can afford, tempo-wise, to make this move. Bishop g7, it's very well worth tempo. So, knight f3, castling, knight c3, knight c6, castling, and black played e5. Well, d5 is pretty good for white. And also, what is good for white, what happened in the game. In the game, white simply took on e5, black took back, and white went bishop e3. Now, what do we have? We have almost symmetrical pawn structure. Bishop on g7 is it's kind of very passive, almost dead bishop there. And white has chance to quickly get control on d5 square when black has difficulties to control d4 square. So after bishop e3, h6 was played. And I don't particularly like bishop b5 move. I like bishop c4 a lot better. But even after bishop b5 that white played, knight h5, they played a kind of weird strategy, queen c1, but they still got an advantage. Knight d4, attacking knight on f3, and now after uh, knight d4, bishop e2. Well, that's why I didn't like bishop b5 move. It looks like it didn't produce any results. So after bishop e2, knight takes e2, knight takes e2, but black is still having problem. Now the h6 pawn is hanging, and after g5, bishop c5, rook e8, rook d1, 
queen f6 and rook d6 white still has clear advantage so this position can take some misplaying and white has still maintained advantage and rook d1 came white is better but again what i would recommend is a lot easier way it's um, when a black played h6 bishop c4 that then you exchange queens and put rooks on d1 and c1 and go knight d5 this will make black's life very very difficult and that's a good size advantage for white let's go to next game well next game black quickly got real bad position e4 c5 with the same variation c3 d6 d4 knight f6 d takes c well this is the way we don't want to play but the reason I'm bringing this game to show you that after knight c6, f3, now white, I mean black, must play d5. Because if black plays dc the way they did, then we get the position we could get uh, the other way. If we, even after bishop d, this is the type of position. After queen takes d8, knight takes d8, knight a3. This is much better position uh, because knight on f6 is passive. Uh, white has good outpost on c4 and on b5. Game was played on a lower level, but to show you the position and to indicate that white has good size advantage is 100% correct in this case. So game that is coming next to our attention is was played on very high level. It was played between two highly rated grandmasters. It was played um, between 25 plus federated grandmaster Narciso Narciso and with the black played GM rated 2650 so let's see the opening quite interesting e4 c5 c3 d6 d4 knight f6 bishop d3 and here that's when I mentioned that black can play immediate g6 White goes h3, and remember we said we want to go knight f3, not to allow bishop g4. h3, bishop g7, knight f3, and both sides castled. cd, cd. This is clear advantage for white in this position. White has center that black cannot shake and if black plays the way they played in a previous game as I already mentioned d5 is okay and d e is okay but black played d5 this is completely different plan and not very good one e5 94 and rookie one well in the game bishop f5 was played protecting the knight and after bishop f5 knight c3 white is clearly better and this is interesting position to know and uh, uh, bishop takes d3 Queen takes d3, knight c6. Well, to some people, inexperienced people, may think that 
black is doing very well, but they don't. The reason why, uh, well, it looks like black may have outpost for knight on c4, better bishop, but nothing can be farther from truth. Well, let me explain why. White's bishop on c1 is much better than bishops on g7. Even though there are pawns on light squares and white's pawn on dark squares, bishop on g7 does not have any future. Completely blocked with white's pawn structure c3, d4, e5. Also, when there are, there is a rule, when there are seven pawns on a board for each side, there is in 99% of the time, there is no good bishop. Well, if there is, then white has it. And if there is a bad bishop, then black has it. So that's exactly the case of good or bad bishop definition with a lot of pawns on the board on the board. So and after knight c six h four was played. Very good and very correct plan. White wants to go h five. Well for example, I, let me show you why h four is such a good move. And after pawns h pawn exchanged you will see that white accomplished two very important tasks after knight g5. Number one, they open the h file and will try to mate black. And number two, they eliminated the h pawn so black cannot kick the g5 knight away. h4 is a strong move h5 was played by black so for the same reasons black tried to stop it but then e6 and you see black cannot recapture on e6 black cannot go f6 because of g6 pawn they have to go f5 and after rook b1 that was not necessary move b6 knight g5 knight has now nice outpost on g five possibility of going to f seven in my opinion black is totally busted uh, after rook c eight queen f three white didn't play it perfectly but the, what they did is good enough queen f three knight a five knight h three and here is another shocking news for me knight f four Queen takes c3. It it always puzzled me. How can Grandmaster misplay position so badly? Well, let me tell you what I mean. This is actually a good, good lesson for everyone. This is something I've said many times previously on my tapes. You should use very simple logic. White exchanged queens and won the game and let me go with this quickly first before I suggest anything. Knight takes the 5 rook d3 Knight takes the 7 king h7, bishop g5 Well I agree this may be sufficient to win the game rook bd1 because of strong pass pawn and in two, three moves, it was all over. Rook e8. And uh, now rook takes d4. Bishop takes d4 and knight d5. And position just absolutely terrible for black and they reside. But this is a highly illogical move. Black has terrible weakness on g6. If white gets this weakness, the game is over. Because then h5 pawn hangs and everything. Why do we exchange queens? 
when we have potentially murderous attack. After Bishop E3, position is totally lost for black. King H7, just to give you a quick example, we go rook C1, not this rook, because black may go queen B4, and then when we take on C8, they take on E1. So, if it's a simple win here, rook C1, queen A3, just to show you, we take, and we go queen G3, and we take on G6 next move. The reason why we exchanged rooks, we don't want to go queen G3 if they can go rook F6. But even then, we can go rook C1. It's also busted completely. The fact is, we have to keep the queens on the board. Rook C1, queen A3, and after taking, uh, I am sure there is multiple ways white can checkmate black. After queen takes G6, knight takes H5, I mean, this is almost uh, impossible to stop mate in several moves. Well, this is approximately all, this is about all I want to say on d5 variation. So, before, before I leave you and before we finish this DVD, I want to show you also how would you, I already mentioned queen a5 option, well now I want to mention g6 option. Well g6 is positions are very well known to me because I play accelerated dragon for black and try to, uh, you know, make this position very well playable. Let me explain something about g6 position and show you one game of mine that I played with white. D4 must be played here. What I want to tell you is that position after knight f3 and bishop g7 and d4, they are okay for black because black is going to take cd, cd, d5, ed, knight f6, bishop b5, and knight d7. This position is okay for black. But position with knight on g1 and bishop on f8 is not. Why? So now let's play knight g1 and bishop f8. It's like we had this position um, without those moves. Or even better, let's start all over again, e4, c5, c3, g6, d4, cd, cd, d5, ed, knight f6, bishop b5, check, knight d7. You see knight is on g1 and bishop on f8. Why it's such a big difference? I will show it to you now. This is the game that was played by me with white and I won quite convincingly. And then many times I tried to improve position for black. I wanted to make this position uh, playable for black for accelerated dragon because there are some transpositions, but I couldn't. Position is really bad for black. What happened here? Bishop g7, d6, and you will see now why knight on g1 is very important. Ed, queen e2 check, queen e7, bishop f4, attacking d6 pawn, and d5 is really bad move positionally uh, because White is simply going to take 
knight f3 and knight e5 and d5 weakness is crucial the way black plays here queen takes e2 and how do we take we don't take with the knight no in order to put sufficient pressure on black's position we have to take with the bishop and now black protects the pawn on d6 and bishop goes to f3 this is the key of maintaining the knight on g1 that we keep an eye on b7 pawn and knight is being developed on e2 that's exactly my position um, against Swedish I am uh, he played knight b6 knight g2 but now he has to develop the light square bishop how to do it it's very very difficult he tried a6 I went a4 knight c4 I want b3 now if knight a5 I would go b4 uh, I want b3 knight b6 position is very difficult castling bishop e6 trying to get a, a relief uh, for black bishop takes b7 rook a7 bishop f3 now taking on b3 is not possible because of rook b1 and you'll see black is going to lose a piece and position is uh, black is simply down a pawn for hardly any compensation well just no compensation knight bd5 bishop g5 king d7 bishop takes f6 knight takes f6 and simply activate the uh, pass pawn extra pass pawn rook b8 b5 d5 trying to stop white from playing bishop c6 check d5 rook f to b1 bishop f5 b6 rook a b7 and very strong positional move a5 exchange black is has an exchange up but it's absolutely irrelevant once knight goes to c5 pawn on b6 itself almost water rook um, knight a4 and what what black played here was actually it's not that important anymore rook e7 knight c5 attacking the a6 pawn knight d7 knight takes a6 and on rook a8 knight c5 back well now rook takes a5 will be met by knight b7 check and if knight takes then b7 followed by a6 all both variations are totally deadly for black bishop takes d4 knight takes d7 and rook takes a5 knight takes d4 just uh, black just lost a whole bunch of material uh, we already could have closed before that uh, uh, king c6 knight c7 attacking d5 and on king b7 knight takes d5 and rook takes d5 rook d1 winning the piece now king c6 is out of question because we simply take and pawn queens black reside and black never could fight against the pressure on a queen side and they end up los losing the b7 pawn and the game that's why in this position it's 
very important to have after e4, c5, c3, g6. Very important to play this position with knight on g1. So bishop b5 check, knight d7, knight c3, bishop g7. If black castles, why they are doing okay? d6, castling simply leaves them down a pawn with no compensation at all. And after ed, queen e2 check, and then queen e7, bishop f4. That's how we got so much pressure on the queen side. This position is very difficult, and black uh, never got a break. They lost a pawn and the game. This will conclude my preview. Well, it's not really a preview. It's a abbreviated version of C3 Sicilian Alapin variation, where um, I am the reason why it's abbreviated, because not because I miss a lot of things. Yes, I did miss a lot of things, but I the important points that you have to know and variations you have to know and principles you have to follow they are all there that's all you need to start playing c3 sicilian in sicilia and if you think this is insufficient it's always helpful to look at more games played by strong players and you can find a bunch of them in the database so thank you very much i hope you learn a lot and good luck with a lapin variation in sicilia <laughs>